Hi everyone, in this episode we'll be creating a simple run cycle. So just like the walk cycle last episode, we're going to start and end with the contact pose where the front foot is striking the ground. In between these two will come the passing position where the one leg has just swung past the leg on the ground. Directly after the first contact pose comes the down pose, the lowest point in the run, and then there's an in-between frame before the passing position. After the passing position comes the up position, the highest point in the run, where the character uses their back leg to essentially launch themselves off the ground. Following this is one frame where the character has both legs off the ground before we reach the next contact pose. This completes a single step in the run, so obviously this needs to be mirrored for the second step to complete the run cycle. So we can start by getting the same window set up from last episode. We'll just drag out from the top right here, go to the dope sheet and choose action editor. And here we've got one action at the moment, the walk cycle that we created. So we're going to close that by um, pressing on this little X button here and create a new action and we'll call this run. And as before, we're just gonna press this little F key over here to make sure that that gets saved. And we can also zoom in a bit on our timeline here. It's going to be a six frame cycle, so we only need to see the first 13 or so frames to see the whole thing. Let's start by creating our first contact pose. So I'm going to stretch the blue leg out a little bit more and then bring the whole body down so that the foot can actually reach the ground. You can then just press Alt R to clear the rotation on the green toes here and just stretch the whole green leg back. You can maybe grab the hips and just make the character lean into the run a little bit. And then the blue leg is forward, so of course the blue arm is going to be back and the green arm will be forwards. So from front view, you can maybe double tap R to enter this trackball rotation mode and just rotate the uh, arms across the chest slightly do the same with the hands, and we can maybe uh, rotate the uh, chest bone itself just a little bit across, like so. And then the head is going to want to try and remain as stable as possible, so we can rotate that back to its upright position. All right, we're going to want to grab the foot here and just move it across the x-axis so that it's a little bit more in line with the center so that the character is sort of maintaining his balance a little bit better. Can then select all of those bones and press I to insert our first keyframe. Remember this is set to uh, location and rotation as our default from the last episode. Then going ahead six frames to frame seven, we're going to want to paste the mirror of this pose. So just press Control C, Shift Control V, or use these buttons at the bottom here and then press I to insert that keyframe. So we can press Alt-A to preview this so far. Uh, it doesn't look like much at the moment. So let's go to the middle frame, frame four, and uh, create our passing position. So here the blue leg should still be on the ground. So let's grab that, move it down. I'm gonna zoom in, zoom in here a little bit. Let's rotate the toes. Maybe enter wireframe mode so we can see this a bit better. Just want these to be flat on the ground, all right. And then the green leg is passing the blue leg at this point. You can maybe bring the whole body up a little bit. All right, let's insert a keyframe for that. Then let's go back to frame two for our down position. So here we want the foot to be flat on the ground. Can we move this back a bit? And the whole body is gonna come down sort of absorbing the impact of the landing. All right, insert a keyframe for that. We've then got our in-between position. Just want to make sure that the leg, uh, the foot rather, is flat on the ground here. Insert the keyframe. That's looking good. So then our up position, the toes should be touching the ground as the character sort of launches himself into the air. We want the whole body to come as high up as possible while maintaining this sort of slight bend in the uh, in the blue leg. All right, let's insert a keyframe for that. And then finally, our airborne position where the uh, 
where both legs are off the ground. You may bring the green leg a little bit higher up and insert a keyframe. All right, one thing that can be very helpful to visualize the arcs that the legs and the arms move through uh, is to come here into the armature settings and just enable ghosting. So I'm going to go into the in range panel and enable ghosting from frame one to frame six. So we can now see the positions of all of the bones uh, across our animation. It's a little bit overwhelming seeing all of them at once. So I'm going to toggle selected only over here. And let's just select the bones of the green leg. So right away, in my case at least, we can see that uh, in these first three frames, the leg is moving in a very straight line and we'd rather it moved in an arc. So in the second frame here, I'm going to move it lower down. So that should help that a bit. This should be closer to the ground. And this should be a little bit further back and also lower to the ground. And right away, that's looking a lot better, I think. All right, let's see what the blue leg looks like. So this looks mostly okay, but the spacing is a little bit uneven here. That's not quite on the ground. Just maybe move that a little bit further back. So this can come back a little bit more. And this could come slightly further back. And in that way, the, the uh, spacing between the positions is a little bit uh, more even. Okay, let's disable ghosting by just setting the end frame back to frame one. And let's have a look at this from front view. The one thing that's a bit weird is how the foot is sort of sliding across the X axis here. So uh, let's select the IK bone. And you can see that that has highlighted it in the dope sheet summary over here. So you can press the drop down to see the keyframes for each of the individual axes. We've got keyframes for X location, Y location, Z location, as well as all of the rotation axes. So we want it to maintain its X location. So I'm going to box select all of the keyframes except for the first one and delete those. So now it keeps its uh, initial X location here. And at the end, I'm just going to press I to insert a keyframe there. Now, we've changed the X location for this uh, on the last frame. So we're going to have to change it for the green leg as well on the first frame. So let's just press Control C here and then Shift Control V. And that has updated it. So we'll select the green legs IK bone and just press I to insert a keyframe there. And let's drop that down here as well so we can see its X location keyframes. I'm going to delete all of these except for the first and the last one. All right. And then at the passing position, I'm just going to move it out a little bit and insert a keyframe so that it sort of swings around the blue leg uh, and doesn't collide with it. The other thing I noticed that was a little bit weird is the head's rotation. So let me close these and let's select the head bone. And I'm just going to uh, delete all of its rotational keyframes. So just delete those. And let's go into frame one here and just not rotate it quite so much. So press I there. And then you can press Control C, go to the end, Shift Control V, and insert the keyframe. All right. It's not swaying from side to side quite so much anymore. I can close that. And we now want to mirror all of the keyframes for the second step. So let's select all of the keyframes here with A, and then select all of the bones in the scene view as well. And then with the cursor over the dope sheet view, and with our little scrubber on the last frame, let's press Control C to copy the keyframes, and then Shift Control V to paste the mirrors of them. All right, and like I showed last episode, you can also use the little buttons over here. All right, so we're ending on frame 13, which is the same as frame one. So when we're playing this back, we want to actually 
end on frame 12 uh, before looping back to frame 1. So let's set our end keyframe to frame 12. And I'm just going to hide the bones and press Alt A to play. Okay, so this is looking fairly decent, I think. So we're going to leave the run animation there. I would quickly like to take a minute to create a very simple idle animation just so that we're ready to import this into Unity in the next episode. So I'm going to press Alt H to unhide the bones. And I'm going to close this run animation here, create a new animation called idle. Just press the F key to save that. And going to frame one, let's press Alt R and Alt G to clear this. And let's just set up a very neutral pose. Rotate that a bit, bring this down. Maybe the legs can be a little bit further apart. So just move those out on the x-axis. Rotate the feet slightly. And let's copy this over onto the other side. Do something like that for our first frame. And then go to zoom out, shift D, move this out to say frame 100 or something. And then at frame 50, you can just move down a little bit as if he's sort of breathing slightly. So set the end frame to frame 99. And we can preview that with Alt A. So nothing terribly exciting, of course, but it's just uh, something to work with uh, once we import this into Unity in the next episode. The other thing I'd like to do is to create one more action called simply T pose, which has just got one keyframe uh, of our character in his default T pose position. And as always, just press the F key to save that. All right, so we've now got four actions, an idle, a run, a T-pose, and a walk. And we are ready to import this character into the Unity game engine in the next episode. So until then, cheers.